A few of you all asked me to attempt drawing a lehenga on a Dove Illustrator. So today, I'm gonna try to draw this Sabyasachi lehenga. And if you follow along, at the end of this video, you will have something that looks like this. So let's get started. On a side note guys, quickly write these shortcuts down somewhere because it will make your life super super easy while drawing. Alright, so I've opened up an A3 size artboard on Adobe Illustrator and the first thing I'm gonna do is paste the photograph of the lehenga that I want to draw. I will leave a link to this photo below in the description. So, lesson one is how to create outlines to use as a guide for our sketch. For this, I'm going to start by reducing the opacity of this photo so that I can draw over it using it like a template underneath. First, click the image, then open up the transparency panel here and reduce the opacity to 50%. And you can see that the image has dimmed. Now open the layers panel and just so we know what lies on which layer, Let's rename layer 1 to the word template by double clicking on the words layer 1. Then come here and click the plus icon to create a new layer. And on this layer, we're going to draw our rough outlines. So I'm going to rename this layer as well to rough outlines. Next, lock the template layer so that we do not touch or move it while we are drawing our outlines. Then select the rough outline layer and let's close the layers panel. And let's begin drawing guys. Hit P on your keyboard to bring up the pen tool. Make sure it has a black stroke and no fill and start drawing the outlines of the model and her garment like this. Now, as you can see, I'm not being too perfect with my outlines as in some lines are extending beyond what they should like these lines here. And that is because there's an easy way to come back later and clean them up. If you are able to get your lines to end perfectly at the right spot, then that is awesome. But if you are new to Illustrator, I will show you a simple way to come back later and clean up your lines so that they end perfectly at the right spots. Once you are done with all the outlines, you should have something that looks like this. And now let's get to cleaning up the lines. First, with my selection tool, I'm going to highlight everything that I drew, then zoom in and come here and choose the Shape Builder tool. Now the Shape Builder tool by default will have this plus symbol next to it. But if you hold down Option, then it will change to a minus symbol and while it is in this mode, it means that any line or shape that you touch will be deleted. So I'm going to come here to this line at the neck, which is sticking out. And if I click it, the extra bit disappears and the line ends perfectly where it should. Similarly, I'm going to clean up this entire outline drawing of all the lines that are sticking out unnecessarily. When you're done with the outline completely, come here to the artboard panel and click on the plus icon to create a new artboard. Then highlight all the outlines you drew, right click and select group. Then just bring them over to the new artboard like this. Next, I'm going to put back my photograph to 100% opacity because it's now going to act as a reference image for me to copy. So I need to see it clearly. For this, unlock the template layer and then come to opacity and simply increase it back. Then go back and lock the layer again. Now let's get to lesson number two, how to create a single skirt panel or a single skirt pleat. Okay, for this, let's create a third new layer and rename it to swatching for lack of a better term. And this is where the fun begins, guys. We're gonna try and replicate this artwork. 
But before that, I'm going to quickly put together the main color palette for my sketch. So start by making a set of squares like so. Then highlight the topmost square. Hit I on your keyboard to bring up the eyedropper tool and then use it to select a color on the photograph. The eyedropper tool will convert the color of your highlighted square to whichever color it touches. So the first two squares I have changed to her main skin color and a darker skin color for skin shadows and the third and the fourth are the red colors of the lehenga. One darker and one lighter. And the fifth is the goldenish embroidery or trim color that you can see throughout the lehenga. Now let's add these five colors to our swatch panel so that we can easily access it later to color stuff in. So let's open up the swatch panel, then click on the new color group icon. When this box opens up, hit OK. And as you can see, all your colors have been added to the swatch panel. So close the panel, delete these squares, and let's create a new artboard to get started with the actual drawing. So what I'm going to do is copy paste the photograph here. Then I'm selecting the rectangle tool and drawing a rectangle only over this area of the skirt. Now highlight both the rectangle drawn and the photograph. Right click and choose make clipping mask. Now creating a clip mask is just like cropping. We have cropped the photograph to just this area because this is the area that we're going to start drawing first. I'm going to zoom in. Then hit P on my keyboard to get the pen tool. Then open the swatch panel and choose the goldenish color that we had previously added. Make sure that it is the stroke color for now. Then I'm going to draw a straight line right over my cropped photo like this, using the photo underneath as a guide. Let's increase the stroke width to 4. Then come here and click on Swap Fill and Stroke and the goldenish color will move from the stroke to the fill. Then draw out only the left half of the leafy pattern on the photo itself like this. Now the photo isn't the clearest but I'm going to assume that this is what the pattern looks like. Switch back to Stroke and draw out the leaf stems. When you're done, highlight everything and drag it to the right and you should have something that looks like this. Let's straighten it out. And now what's missing is the flowers that are placed here. And it looks like one half of the flower is right here at the top. So let's copy this part of the flower to the right and complete it by giving it its right half. For this, right click on the half, then go to transform, reflect, make sure vertical is selected and hit copy. And when a copy is created, move the copy to the right side. I'm also going to highlight both halves, then come here and open up the Pathfinder tool and click on Unite. This will unite both halves of the flower into one. Next, let's go place the flowers where it needs to be, like this. I'm also going to draw in any missing leaves. And when the left half is completely done, highlight everything and expand it by coming here to Object and expand and hit OK. Great! Now let's see if there is anything that we can do to make this artwork look a bit 3D like the photograph. So I'm going to test out highlighting only the leaves, then making a copy by using the shortcuts Command C and Command F. With the copy highlighted, click on Swap, Fill and Stroke. Then increase the stroke to about 3. And now, Open the gradient panel and drag and drop the stroke color from here to the gradient bar here. The stroke of our leaves will now have a gradient ranging from this color to this color to this, giving it a nice 3D type effect. Since this looks okay, I'm going to first expand it and then repeat the same 3D outline effect for the remaining items in my artwork, like the flowers and the stems. And we are done guys. Now reflect a copy onto the right side and send it to the back so that the center stalk remains in front. Okay, now for a bit more of the 3D effect, I'm going to select only the flowers, then come to Object, Path and Offset Path. 
Now offsetting will create a new path adjacent to the highlighted path. Let's say you have a square. A negative offset will create a tinier square on the inside, while a positive offset will create a larger square on the outside. Offsetting a path is very cool because the new shape will be perfectly proportional to the existing one. Since I have my flowers highlighted, I'm going to go with a negative offset to create shapes inside those flowers. And the offset already is at minus one millimeter, but I'm going to change it to minus two. And when I hit OK, this is what happens. A new path has been created inside of my flowers. So let's give it a different color. Using my eyedropper tool, I'm going to pick the dark brown shade that is at the center of the flowers on the photograph. And yep, the artwork is now done. Now group everything together and let's draw the background. I'm going to select the lighter red shade from my swatch panel, then draw a rectangle like so and send it to the back of the artwork. Then with the direct selection tool, I'm going to highlight this point and holding down shift, I'm also going to highlight this point. And you see these tiny dots that have appeared? I'm going to click and drag them downward so that the angled corners round out like this. And this looks okay. Now guys, there is some artwork that is running around this shape. So let's do some guesswork and create something similar. Which brings me to lesson number three, how to create a pattern brush. Select the goldenish color from the swatch panel, then draw a circle like so, followed by a rectangle like so. I'm also going to make the rectangle a bit lighter in color. Now let's make a pattern brush out of this artwork. I'm going to highlight both objects, then reduce the size before we make it into a brush because otherwise we will end up with a huge size brush that will be difficult to navigate. Then come up here to the brush definition panel and click on new brush. Choose pattern brush and hit OK. And these options look fine, so again hit OK. Now let's try out the brush that we just made. Select the red background. Make a copy of it by hitting Command C and Command F. Then swap the stroke and the fill and choose the brush that we just created. And guys, the brush is perfect except it is currently running in the opposite direction. So all you have to do is come here to Options of Selected Object and choose Flip Across and hit OK. And it is fine now, so let's reduce the size to match the photograph reduce the stroke to 0.3. Now let's make two more copies of this entire artwork and place them like so. So we are done with this portion of the artwork guys. What I'm going to do next is highlight everything and move it downwards on my artboard. Then extend the photograph like this because we are now going to work on this area. To start this, I'm going to select the dark red from my swatch panel then draw a large rectangle matching the photograph and send it to the back. And this brings us to lesson number four, how to create a seamless repeat pattern. The pattern here is not clear, so I'm just going to do some guesswork. I'm going to first draw a flower. Start with a circle like this, which represents a single flower petal. Then come up here to object, repeat and radial. Now the single petal that we drew has multiplied into many petals placed perfectly in a radial fashion. See this symbol here? If you click it, it will show you how many times your petal has been multiplied. And right now it says 8 instances, which is 8 petals. It looks like too many to me, so I'm going to reduce it by dragging the symbol downwards. While you drag it downwards, it will also tell you how many petals it now has. And yup, five petals looks very cute. So let's go draw one more white circle at the center like so. And the flower is done, so let's group everything together. Now make two more copies. Then with my goldenish color in a stroke, I'm going to use my pen tool to draw out stalks. Then swap the stroke and fill and draw in the leaves. This motif is done, so let's expand everything and then group everything together. Then reduce its size to match the photograph. 
and let's go create a seamless repeat pattern with this motif. So Illustrator has made it super easy to create a pattern today, guys. All you have to do is come here to Object, Pattern and Make. Then hit OK when this box comes up. And as you can see, Illustrator has itself by default placed your motif in a basic pattern and additionally, your new pattern has been added to your swatch panel here. You also have this section with a lot of settings to make any adjustments necessary and those adjustments will also automatically be added to the pattern in the swatch panel. Now the current repeat pattern that Illustrator gave us by default does not match our photo unfortunately. So I'm going to come here to tile type and change it to brick by column. And this looks closer to what is on the photograph except we also need to increase the height to about 18 and the width is already fine as it is. And this actually looks perfect to me. When you are finished with editing your repeat pattern, click on done and your pattern will be saved here. Now let's go test out the pattern. Let's delete this motif, zoom out, click on the background and make a copy of it by hitting Command C and Command F. Then go click on the pattern you made in the swatch panel. And yup, the pattern has turned out fine and looks fairly similar to the photograph. Now the top part of the skirt is completely done. So I'm going to highlight everything and move it upwards so that I can work on the artworks at the bottom. Once again, extend the photograph like this. Then I'm going to draw a rectangle like this with the goldenish shade that I have. So in this section, I'm starting by creating different colored rectangles like this matching the photograph. I'm going to stop here and work on the patterns for this section first. And for this, we get to lesson number five, how to create a grid repeat. I'm beginning by selecting the goldenish shade for my stroke this time and drawing out a curved line like so with the pen tool. Let's increase the stroke width and also add a gradient to this line. Now come to Object, Repeat and Grid. And as you can see, a single shape has turned into repeats in this manner. And what is so easy about this technique is, if I click on this bar and drag it up, I can reduce it to a single line of repeats and dragging this bar to the right increases the number of repeats. Also, dragging this circle up here to the left will bring the repeats closer together so that I am finally left with something that looks like this. Now all that's left to do is resize it and place it on the skirt panel. Next, I'm going to add in the brush pattern that we made previously. Add a few more copies like this. And then let's try the grid repeat technique again for a star pattern this time. So draw two stars like so, then go to object, repeat and grid and this happens. Now adjust and resize the pattern and place it on the skirt panel. Next, I'm going to use the grid repeat techniques again to create some more motifs that can fill up my skirt panel. Here I've pasted the flower that we drew before. Then I'm just copy pasting the same repeat again, trying as best as I can to match the photograph. And here is one final repeat shape that I am creating. And when you are done guys, you should have one entire skirt panel that looks like this. Okay, lesson number six is how to rasterize an image. So first and foremost, make a copy of this artwork and place it somewhere else on this document itself, guys, because we will need it in the future. Because what we're going to do next is convert this image from vector to raster. And in the process, you will lose the individual artworks. So first group the entire thing together, then go to object, rasterize, and when this box opens up, make sure that these are the settings and hit OK. You can delete this photo as we no longer need it. 
But if you click on your artwork now, it sort of has come together to form one piece. All the individual artworks have now been flattened out. And with that, we come to lesson number seven, how to envelop distort an image, which by the way, only works on rasterized images. So I'm gonna reduce the size of the rasterized image, place it on my drawing like so. Then come to object, envelope distort, and choose make with mesh. Now when this box opens up, it's gonna ask you how many rows and columns you want in your mesh. For now, I'm gonna go with one row and two columns and then hit OK. So what this did is, it layered a mesh of blue lines over my artwork, indicating rows and columns. This blue line here divides the artwork into two columns. And since I picked one row, the entire thing is one row. Now, while this artwork is in this stage with the mesh over it, I'm gonna once again make a copy of this and save it on another part of this document because again, I will need to use this later. So what you can do with this mesh is choose your direct selection tool and start distorting this image so that it starts to look like one pleat on your skirt. I'm gonna start up here. Drag the anchor points like so. Then do the same at the bottom. I'm using the handles at the anchor points as well to properly shape this pleat. And when all the molding and shaping is done for one pleat, take the pen tool and draw the shape of exactly one pleat over the distorted artwork, following the rough outlines that you previously drew. Then highlight both the shape you drew and the distorted image below right click and go to make clipping mask. This will crop your image perfectly to one pleat only. And guys, this is what the first pleat looks like and it looks pretty similar to the photograph on the left. You can see that I distorted the image in such a way that the pattern has been squeezed towards the sides but left the way it is at the center because that is what a pleat of fabric will look like in real life. Now I'm gonna go on to repeat the exact same steps for the rest of the pleats on the skirt. So I'm gonna paste my skirt panel with the mesh applied and like before, distort it with the direct selection tool and then go on to clip mask it into the shape of the next pleat. When all the skirt panels are done, you should have something that looks like this. Let's move to the blouse. I'm starting by selecting my dark red shade from the swatch panel and simply filling in the blouse in solid color like this. Next, with the rectangle tool, I'm selecting the repeat pattern that we made and drawing a shape like so. Then place it like this because we're going to first work on the right half of the blouse only. Start by rasterizing this pattern and let's envelope distort it again but this time with three rows and three columns because unlike the skirt, the blouse needs more shaping and distorting and therefore more rows and columns will allow for that. So start by tilting it a bit like this then use the direct selection tool to begin distorting the pattern. Here as well, the pattern needs to be squeezed toward the upper shoulder and at the side seams. Once done, clip mask the distorted image into the right half of the blouse, like you already know. 
and I'm just going to reflect this shape onto the left. Now follow the same steps to add the pattern on the sleeve. And when you are done, guys, it should look something like this. Now for the blouse, there is some extra work happening at the neckline and at the hem. So let me clip mask and crop a copy of the photograph so that you guys can see it better. And yes, there are tapes falling at the neckline and at the hem. So to create these tapes, I'm going to paste my original artwork here and take out a few lines of artwork from this so that they can form the tape trim at the hem first. Like always, rasterize the tape, then place it on the sketch and envelope distort it. I'm bringing the photograph over so that my tape can match it as much as possible. Now clip mask it. Then a similar tape I'm going to add at the neckline using the same steps as before. When done, you should have something that looks like this. This looks good so far guys. So let's move to the dupatta. For the dupatta as well, I'm starting by copy pasting my photograph here and then drawing a rectangle like so, just over the dupatta area, then highlighting both the rectangle and the photograph and clip masking it. I can now focus on replicating this area alone. So I'm gonna start with drawing a square like so in the dark red shade. Then I'm choosing the blob brush tool and drawing in curves like so trying to match the dupatta's design. Let's make a copy above and draw in some more curves. Now highlight everything and just like we did in lesson number four, we're gonna create a seamless repeat pattern out of these curves. So go to object, pattern, make, hit OK. And I'm back on my blob brush tool and I am drawing one set of leaves like this on my pattern tile. And you can see that my entire repeat pattern has also filled up with that leaf. I'm also adding in a curve like this. And again, the same curve appears throughout my pattern. Go on and create a seamless repeat pattern in this way. Next, let's test a gradient on any one curve and see what that looks like. So I'm going to highlight this, then open the gradient panel, drag and drop the color onto the gradient bar. And the current gradient on the curve looks fine. So let's highlight all the curves, then use the eyedropper tool to convert all of them into the gradient curve. I'm also going to adjust a few of the gradient directions by clicking on a single curve, then using the gradient tool to change their gradient direction. When done, also change the leaves to the gradient fill. When you are finished with editing your repeat pattern, click on done. Now delete the old artwork, create a new bigger square and let's test out the pattern we made by making a copy of the square and changing the fill of the copy to the pattern in the swatches panel. And this looks awesome guys, so let's go add it to our drawing. I'm starting by giving my entire dupatta a red color fill. When done, it will look like this. Now let's delete this and draw a long shape of the pattern like this. Then reduce its size to match the photograph. Again, save a copy of this somewhere else on your artboard. And we're going to rasterize and envelope distort and clip mask this shape just like we did in lesson 6 
and lesson 7. So since you guys are already familiar with these steps, I'm going to play how I distort the pattern to all the sections of the dupatta as a time lapse. Awesome! Now the dupatta also has a border. So I'm going to reuse artworks from the skirt panel that we initially made. And we have this ready. But the border also additionally has rows of tassels running along the length. So with my blob brush tool again, in my goldenish color, I'm going to draw lines like this very roughly. Then double click the fill color here. Choose a lighter shade. Hit OK. And draw in more lines like this. Now keep choosing lighter and lighter and lighter shades and filling in this row of lines so that eventually you end up with something that looks like tassels. Now you guys remember the grid repeat technique that we learned in lesson 5? I'm going to use that same technique again to convert these lines into a long row of tassels. And we are done. Place it on the tape. Send it to the back. And make one more copy of the whole thing so that we have a longer border length. Now rasterize it. Make a copy and place it on the sketch. Place one more like this. Once again, you guys know the remaining steps of the distorting and clip masking. So I'm going to play the remaining of the dupatta border creation like a time lapse. And finally, the lehenga looks like this. Now I'm going to work on an important part, her skin. So start by creating a new layer, call it skin, and place it below the swatching layer. Make sure that all other layers are locked. Now close the panel and let's get to work. I'm choosing the skin shade from my palette and starting to draw like so. I only need to worry about drawing my lines perfectly at her forehead hairline and ears. And the rest I can just draw like this because the swatching layer falls above my skin layer. Now let's create one more layer for hair. Place it below the skin layer and let's go draw in that as well. Again, I'm drawing it like this because the skin layer and the swatching layer falls over the hair layer. And this is the overall look so far, so let's get to shading her skin. Start by clip masking just her face on the photograph and bringing it over to the sketch like this. So in case we need help, we can use it like a guide for drawing her face. And now guys, we are at lesson number 8. How to draw facial features. So on my layers panel, I'm going to first make my rough outlines layer invisible and then create a new layer called facial features above the skin layer. Now guys, I have a super detailed video on how I draw facial features. I will link it above for you to check it out. 
And because I am short on time and I won't be able to explain as well as the way I have explained in that video, I'm going to quickly run through this facial features segment of the video as a time lapse. So once again, definitely go check out that video. It will tell you all these steps in super detail. And when you're done, this is what the facial features will look like. I'm also going to shade in her hands with the same techniques after creating a new layer called hands. And this is also done. Next, I'm going to create her skirt's waistband by copy pasting the same tape that we placed at her neckline. Envelope distort and clip mask like usual. And lesson number nine is how to add shadows to the lehenga. I'm going to create a new layer at the very top and call it shadows. Then I'm going to draw in my very first shadow shape. Let's change the color to a dark, dark red. I'm also adding a swatch here for future reference. Then I'm going to open the gradient panel, drag and drop my dark red onto the gradient bar. And this time, reduce the opacity of the white area to zero. Then, click on the gradient tool to adjust the shading on it. This bar indicates the gradient bar shown here. So I'm reducing the length. I'm also changing its direction. And this looks okay. I'm then going to come here to the transparency panel and change the transparency mode to darken. This will allow some of the artworks below the gradient shape to stand out better. I'm also going to reduce the opacity a little bit. Now guys, in the same way, I'm going to continue creating gradient shapes for the remaining skirt panels. You can feel free to even copy and paste the first gradient that you made to finish things faster. I'm creating these individually because I want it to be different from one another, but you can do whatever you want. I'm then going to go on to add gradients to the rest of the lehenga.
and when you finish you should have something that looks like this so guys technically you can stop here but i'm gonna go on to add a few more finishing touches i know this is only a lehenga tutorial but i want to draw out a bit of jewelry as well so i'm gonna try her mang tikka Okay, this looks okay. I'm also going to go back and add gradients to her hands as well because I'm not too satisfied with how it looks at the moment. Let's also give her a bindi and in case you guys are interested in adding some dimension to her hair then here is how I do it. I'm going to first unlock the hair layer then double click on the black fill color here to open up the color picker panel and choose a lighter gray shade. Then with the pencil tool I'm going to roughly draw shapes like this. I'm also going to reduce the opacity for them to about 20%. Then draw in a smaller shape like so. Reflect it onto the right side. I'm going to draw one final even smaller shape like this and changing it to a lighter grey shade and reflecting it to the right. And the hair is done guys. It now looks like it has some dimension. I'm going to give her earrings next. And then let's give both her earrings and her mang tikka a gradient effect. Okay, cool. Now I'm going to give her mang tikka a slight shadow. For this, highlight it and come to effect, stylize and drop shadow. I'm going to change my settings to these. and hit OK. And as you can see, her mark ticker now has a slight shadow giving it a more realistic look. And now for a few more finishing touches and also correction of mistakes that I did not have time to correct earlier. And finally, this is what the entire artwork looks like. Also, here is a close-up for you. Thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next week.